afternoon YouTube. It's gone a bit grey now, it was a lovely sunny morning here in Switzerland. I'm playing some British Baroque music. Couldn't resist it. I know you've heard Zadok the Priest a few times on my channel, but somehow it was uh, the thing to, to play because I'm trying out some Innerdale for the first time. I've just dried this up. I've got three times 50 grams in bulk. I have a good impression. And that's all this is, is a first impression. Not really a review. I would need to try it out quite a few more times. got this from a tobacconist in Lugano that I visited when I was down there. You've seen the video about that. Called uh, Two Lions Cigar in, uh, but there's a store in the high street, it's called Havana House. And they have a lot of uh, Garwith and Garwith and Hogith blends. And I asked them if they would send me some and uh, wrote a note in English, you know, because my Italian is written Italian's terrible. And um, Betty, thank you very much, my dear, wrote back in Italian, but we understood each other perfectly. And it just arrived today. So I've jarred it up, and I, I always like to usually jar them a while and, and then try them, because uh, I think the air and everything helps. But I had to have a try, just, you know, on the quick. Tobacco Reviews 3.1, obviously, just starting in, in the excellent class. Burley, Virginia. And that very famous topping that you either love or you hate. Uh, it says, almond, floral essences, fruit, citrus, rum and vanilla. My wife certainly picked up the uh, apricot and the vanilla, so, and some dried fruit, like raisins and stuff. Medium strength, uh, so I'm not really feeling too much nicotine. This is my second bowl, so absolutely manageable for me. Taste medium to full. Moment, it's it's almost milder than I expected. I expected to be overwhelmed by this sort of famous floral essence topping. Everyone says, you know, this is one of the most powerful in that respect. I don't know if I I've, I've got a exhausted tongue because I've had a few bowls in the last few days or. Um, but uh, I find it actually uh, sweet, and I pick up the vanilla, and I pick up a curious floral background, yes, but it's not somehow knocking me over or making me think, uh, you know, it's, it's too strong. A little bit of almond as well. I did try it in a cop because everyone says it will ghost you and all your pipe collection from 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 afar if you if you if you don't take care. So, but I found it smoked very hot in my cob, and uh, this particular one only has a simple filter, a four millimeter, and I put a shadow pad at the bottom. 
wasn't very happy with that smoke in the cob, so I thought I'm going to risk it. This is a pearwood, golden, golden pipes, Polish pipe. I thought, okay, I'll go to the next level and try a, a wood pipe, but maybe not one of my briars. And to be honest, I, I, I think I'm going to try it in a briar and I. If it ghosts it, well, whatever it is, is, is something I probably won't have a problem with the next thing I smoke. Uh, but I don't know, maybe it's because it was fresh when it arrived, it was uh, moist. It wasn't wet towelette, but it was heavy and, and moist, you know, plenty of moisture in there. And I've dried it out to within an hour it was quite friable and now it's really quite dry so some people said you have to dry this out for like you know 100 years and it's still ne not dry but no uh, this whatever I've got here seems to be assuming it is Ennerdale but I have no, no doubt they've sent me what I asked for generally it's been burning quite quite well, occasional relight, but nothing more than sort of the two or three that you'd normally have. If anybody knows a stem maker who's taking up the market of forever stems, where well, they've closed shop now in uh, Walker Briar Works, and you can't get these anymore, but these are absolutely beautiful cob stems, and I would love to know if somebody else is making them. There's a market there, if uh, pipe makers or stem makers would like to move into it. Particularly if they make ones that would take filters like six millimeter, because what I'm smoking here is a legend Missouri Meerschaum cob, which normally takes six millimeter filters, but, um, as far as I know, Forever Stems didn't, they, they made stems that would fit in that kind of uh, pipe, but that were not actually taking a 6mm filter, so I'm using these 4mm ones which do fit in there and do take some of the moisture up. But as I said, for this particular flake, uh, I'm not sure the cob is the right thing to use for me. Well, this video is a sort of in-betweeny. I thought I'd show you some nice uh, walk clips. My wife and I did a few walks around this area and um, I thought I'd share those with you. We saw some nice uh, birds, some nice panoramic views, had certain interest in what was going on in the fields and what crops they were, were growing. I found a pumping station which looks almost like a bunker. I'll take a look, this might amuse you. <laughs> Lovely walk here, just on the flat area near to our village, almost in the next town, but a uh, very charming walk. I think this is actually the wheat, and this, this might be barley. So inspecting the leaves, uh, it looks like that is a pair of lime trees which can grow a very long time, many hundreds of years. Well, I think this dates back to 1818, three years after the Battle of Waterloo. So this little concrete bunker here nestled in a clump of trees in the middle of the fields claims to be a water pumping station 
but it sure looks very secure for a water pumping station. And I always wondered where the Area 51 is in Switzerland. And it is another a letter box, which you wouldn't expect in a pumping station, would you? Just hidden away in a clump of trees, very well disguised on this path here. Amazing what you find with a country walk. Black nose sheep. Just grazing here. There's a lot in this, all over Switzerland you find sheep in little patches of land here. Not far from houses and the town or whatever. Sometimes just in the hills. Lovely. A falcon about to dive. Ooh. Here we go again. Got him. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. We certainly did. And the sun is shining. It's just lovely around here to go for walks and you're always seeing something new. Oh, well, I would like to make uh, some shout outs because I'm getting behind again. And they're piling up because uh, I'm up to about 550 now subscribers, so quite a few have joined on for the, uh, the gore and everything, which is marvellous. Just catching up on some videos that I've watched. Um, good old Tony513. It's a guy I love to watch because he has a beautiful, gentle voice and I can listen to him for hours and he does uh, pipe at the bedside, you probably see that. And he did that lovely uh, Spook Tales, which was um, ahead of its time, I guess, but you could have done that for Halloween. It's just some really interesting stories about things that have happened and that he's seen. And he told those stories beautifully well. Well done, Tony. I thoroughly enjoyed that video. Really, I did. Like all of yours. And I would like to say, uh, Badger Ash, well done on that video you did about the UFO tale for my um, gore, because it's one of the most amazing stories, probably the earliest sighting of a UFO in, in uh, the 1940s. Quite incredible. And another thank you I'd like to um, make, but this is typical of what YTPC offers us all. Um, Balcony Piper, thank you very much for watching my video on filters. And uh, he offered me a little tip because I was saying, you know, the, the long six millimeter white elephant charcoal filters get jammed in cobs and they when you try and get them out they fall apart because they're, they're just not that strong I don't have that problem with nine millimeter filters he said if you replace the stem of the cob with a falcon pipe stem which you can get for about five euro that's true I found several places in the UK where you can get them you can put those straight into a six millimeter cob pipe and the, 
the filters, the 6mm filters are much easier to get out. So I'm going to try that. I've ordered three of them, but these are kind of little tips that you get from our members. Um, where you get multiple solutions to problems that you can try. So one or other solution will usually work. So I would like to make some shout outs. Thank you everybody who subscribed to my channel. The Mountaineer. So you have um, made some lovely videos and I've, I've enjoyed watching them. Thank you for subscribing. Cyclops FPV. Thank you sir for subscribing. Brendan the Palo Duro Piper. Thank you for joining my channel. Sean Cooney, thank you very much for becoming one of my subscribers. Jeffrey Alton Carter, thank you, sir. I've seen one or two videos that you've made. Metroton Angel is now one of my subscribers, thank you. Feltar, Peltar, I think has joined my channel. Thank you very much. Michael Dupre. Thank you, sir, for your sub. Rafael Nascimento. Lovely name. Thank you, sir, for joining. Evaldas F. Caldas has also become a subscriber. Thank you. Michael Zulian, I've seen a few comments from you, sir. Thank you very much. And Srak Lockpicker. It's an interesting name to choose. You must be good at picking locks. Thank you, sir, for joining my channel. Well, just to say, I took some straight out the jar, into the pipe, moist as it is, but I, as I said, this is not overly moist, this is, as some flakes are, uh, moist, but I find it immediately better like that. I, I think this is not a flake to dry out too far. Lit, lit pretty easy and getting significantly more flavour like this. Beautiful nuttiness from the burley and certainly that floral is a little bit stronger but actually very nice. I mean I'm obviously one of those guys that actually likes this. More sweetness. It's really nice like this, so I, I'm gonna not pre-dry this. As I've mentioned before, also with St. James Flake and some other girl with uh, flakes, I think it depends on which particular one and maybe the particular batch or whatever but now this has got the nine millimeter filter which is a mix of meerschaum and active charcoal and of course the meerschaum is going to help anyway to dry enough so it may be in the case of using a nine millimeter meerschaum filter or a mixed one like I have here You don't need to uh, pre-dry it. Very nice. Well, it's a nice new discovery for me. Great. <laughs> well, I'll keep it short today. Thanks very much for looking in. Hope you enjoyed those uh, little walking scenes and um, my little bit of knowledge about Ennerdale, but I 
we'll be coming back to it at some point with a proper review. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.